welcome to episode one of BSN's Summer Cocktail Series. We're going to be taking wild edible plants that are easy to find and putting a new twist on some of our favorite old cocktails. So what do you say we go take a walk in the woods? First plants we're gonna have to find is that Great Basin Indian potato. They like river bottoms. Um, you can often find them right on the snow line where the soil is still wet from being covered by snow. And they really like disturbed soil too. So where we're gonna head is down to one of our local river bottoms and uh, find a place where pocket gophers have been monkeying around all winter. So here it is right here this tiny little white flower and underneath of this white flower there is a delicious little sweet potato about four or five inches down so we want to get a tool and go straight down about as far as you can pry back a little bit and then you really do want to go in with your finger and see if you can get the bottom part because it is a bit delicate. There we go. There she is. So we need to get about six or seven more of these and it'll be the perfect garnish for our cocktail. The next thing we need to find is some desert parsley. We're gonna use that to infuse our potato vodka with a robust celery flavor. You can find this growing in mature sagebrush. So anywhere where the sagebrush is waist high, you're gonna find this plant. There's two types, there's a nine leafed and a fern leaf. They're both usable in this drink. So this is it right here. It's this yellow flower with kind of spindly grass-like leaves way we're gonna harvest it is just kinda pinch at the bottom and give it a nice pull. We don't need to get the bottom of the root, that way it'll grow back, but we wanna get kind of all of this stock, all the leaves and all of the flower. And we're gonna need about 10 of these. Now that we've finished harvesting our plants, it's time to get out the rest of the stuff and fix us a cocktail. So here's the other stuff that we're gonna need. Vodka. And I'm using Grand Teton vodka because it's got an earthy flavor that goes well with wild plants and Bloody Marys in general. We're gonna need a serving glass, a mixing glass, something to muddle our parsley with, a strainer, and our pre-chilled Bloody Mary mix. First thing we need to do after washing our parsley is to take it and break it into small pieces. Put them in the bottom of your cup, flowers and all. And then we're gonna pour a couple ounces of vodka over the top of that. Now you need to take that parsley and work all of that sweet juices out of it until you're left with a kind of green colored looking vodka. And this will take a couple minutes. So the next thing that we're going to do is strain the vodka. Make sure we get all that plant material inside the strainer. We're gonna to wanna to squeeze the rest of that delicious juice out of it. And if you did this right, you should now have a cloudy green mixture. Next, we take our pre-chilled Bloody Mary mix. Everybody's own personal Bloody Mary recipe is the best, so I won't go into detail on that. 
Then we're going to add our pre-washed Great Basin Indian potatoes here. They kind of take the place of olives. And garnish with a spring beauty flower right there. And there we go. That's a Teton Bloody Mary. <laughs>